What is up guys, Stark here. I am back for another character spotlight and in today's character spotlight we will be taking a look at the new 5 star character that has been released on Global and that will be Anastasia. So she is a 5 star caster who is just released with her batch with the new story chapter and as I said she is a caster and she will go up to level 90 and at level 90 she will have 14,259 HP and 10,546 attack. This will rank her 16th overall in HP and 56th overall in attack. Her star absorption is 49, her star generation is 10.8%, and her noble phantasm generations on her attack are going to be 0.51 and on defense it will be 3%. So Anastasia is a really good character in my opinion, although she does get plagued by the caster class. So she's lumped in there with a bunch of other casters that are very good as well. But nonetheless, she is a very good character and a very good caster. And definitely someone you should be grateful for if you do manage to pull her. So she will focus not as a damage dealer per se, but more as a debuffer. She has a lot of different ways to debuff the enemies. Although she can do some really good damage on her own, she is a caster so they do less damage by, you know, just by having that caster class. But she can spam her Noble Phantasm pretty frequently, and it is a very good Noble Phantasm. But before we talk about that, we will talk about her skills, and her first skill is going to be the Mystic Eyes of Penetration D. This will apply Ignore Invincibility to herself for one turn, as well as increasing her own Arts card effectiveness for one turn, and this will also decrease one enemy's debuff resistance for one turn. So you will have a 50% increase to your Arts card effectiveness at level 10, on a 5 turn charge time and you will also have a 100% chance to decrease the debuff resistance of that enemy and at the same time you'll be able to ignore invincibility. So this is going to be very good since she is mainly using her arts cards to charge her double phantasm so being able to get a boost to the effectiveness is going to go a long way in getting that filled very quickly. Uh, the whole point is trying to get her to use her noble phantasm as quickly and as often as possible and uh, this will still do a little bit of extra damage as well. Her second skill is going to be the Charisma of Frostbite B, which will increase all of your allies' attacks for 3 turns, as well as decreasing all enemies' attack for 3 turns. So this is a very good skill, obviously, being able to increase your attack and decrease the enemy's attack, and it is on a 5 turn charge time, so you will be able to recycle this very often, which will be very helpful because you can use it from wave to wave. There's not much else to talk about here, it is just a very good skill in my opinion, doing both. It's just an upgrade of the typical charisma skills where you just get a flat increase to your attack. You're also getting a debuff for the entire enemy team as well. And then third and finally, her third skill is going to be the Schwitzpig B. This will increase her Noble Phantasm gauge and this will also have a chance to inflict stun on that enemy for one turn. Now I am not really a huge fan of skills that have a chance to actually work being a 60% chance to stun. Uh, you do have a 50% increase to your gauge, so even if the stun fails, you'll still be able to get something out of it with the increase to your gauge, and that's gonna get you halfway there to filling your Noble Phantasm, or potentially all the way there if you're gonna use it on the first turn just for the gauge increase, and then potentially have it come back off cooldown for the boss stage. But either way, this is an effective skill one way or the other, and if you do get that stun off, it will be very beneficial to you. As for her passive, she does have two, the first one being the Territory Creation EX, which will increase your Arts card effectiveness by 12%. And the second one is going to be the Fairy Contract A, which will increase your debuff resistance by 10%, as well as increasing your debuff chance rate by 10%. All in all, I think Anastasia has a fantastic set of skills, although the fact that you have a percentage for the stun is a little worrying for me, so I did lose half a point there, but overall I will give her 4.5 stars for her skills. Going back and taking a look at her command cards and her Noble Phantasm. For her command cards, she has a good deck for herself with one quick, three arts, and one buster. And she has very good hit counts as well. Four on the quick, three on her arts and busters, and then five on her extra attack. So obviously she's going to be an arts card dealer, and that's good because you want to use those arts chains to get her Noble Phantasm filled as quickly as possible. As for her command chains, for the most damage output, you're going to go Buster Arts, Arts Extra. For her Noble Phantasm, you're going to go Arts, Arts, Arts Extra, and that could give you a 113% increase to your Noble Phantasm gauge. Now, once again, this is incorporating her skill in, so you do have to factor in that 50% from her third skill. So either, either way, you're going to get a 63% increase if you're not using that skill. That's still pretty good, and that can fill it up halfway and get you potentially 
be using your normal phantasm as for the critical stars going arts arts quick extra will grant you 14 critical stars with anastasia as for her normal phantasm it is typically and predictably going to be an arts card and this will deal damage to all enemies a pretty solid amount but not huge but it's not really why you're using it you're mainly using it for the other effects and the second effect on this normal phantasm will inflict skill seal on all enemies for one turn so that's going to be very nice there's no percent base there it's just going to go right there and do it and it's not stunning the enemy but it's preventing them from using skills but if you do have enemies that are using skills on you then you do want to bring her in and prevent them from using skills and it'll definitely make the fight a lot easier the overcharge effect will also decrease the defense for all of those enemies for three turns so looking at all of her debuffs that she has so she can have the potential to stun an enemy she also has the ability to stun the entire enemy's skills she can reduce the defense of all enemies, reduce the attack of all enemies, and deal some pretty good damage on her own. And she does have a high ability to spam her Noble Phantasm pretty frequently. So that is going to be very awesome for her. Uh, she's going to be a very good character and going to go a long way in helping you beat some of those tougher fights. So for her overall damage, uh, being a caster, she doesn't really offer too much as far as damage goes. But she can do some pretty good stuff there. She does have a pretty solid Noble Phantasm. And she does have two buffs to her own attack. So overall, I will give her three and a half stars for her damage. For her critical ability, though, she is only going to get two and a half stars. She has no sort of crit support whatsoever. And her base stats for crits aren't really that good. So she is only going to get two and a half stars there. Her Noble Phantasm, though, will get five stars. It's a very good Noble Phantasm. And it is also easily spammable. She has good generation for her Noble Phantasm. And her third skill will give her a... 50% increase to her gauge so right there you're halfway to getting your normal phantasm off so it's going to be very easy to use and it's very good so five stars her survivability will only get three and a half stars this would be a little bit lower since she doesn't have any defense but she does have a lot of debuffs and you know debuffing the enemy will also help you stay alive you know decreasing the attack stunning them preventing them from using their skills that does go a long way in keeping yourself and your team alive. So she does get a little bit of a boost there, but she doesn't have any sort of flat defense, so she couldn't get too much higher than that. As for her versatility, I am going to give her five stars. She does find herself into a lot of different teams, strictly just because of the debuffs that she can offer. You know, there are a lot of different situations where you want to decrease the attack, stun the enemy, reduce their defense, and then if you know the boss is going to be using skills or if anyone in that fight is going to be using skills and you're having trouble with it you can bring her in and prevent them from doing that with her noble phantasm which again is very easy to get off so overall she will end up with a four out of five ranking and i do think this ranking is a little bit lower than i would normally say but just based on the criteria that i give the fact that she has no critical ability does drag her down a little bit but overall i do think she is a fantastic character and definitely someone worth pulling for so the only other thing left to talk about here is the banners that she shows up in and unfortunately she only does make a return once throughout the course of this year and that is going to be for the third anniversary and that will also be for the lucky bag guaranteed SSR gotcha. So you're going to be testing your luck. The odds of pulling her off of that will be very low but it is possible so she is, you know, I am including that into this list. So that's it guys, I hope you did enjoy this character spotlight. I will have the character spotlights for the other two characters in this batch coming in the next couple of days. So feel free to check those out. Also feel free to check out the links below to my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and Discord. So I will leave you here with Anastasia's Noble Phantasm, and I will see you guys next time. B, Bye. Bye.